this video is to show the different methods available to us to restrain pediatric patients during transport to the hospital. Uh, the first method you're looking at now is utilizing the four-point restraint system integrated on our cots. Uh, some of the important features of this, uh, depending on the size of the child, you want to make sure that the shoulder straps come down and rest over top of their shoulders and not on their neck. Uh, and not any place else other than riding over their shoulders. Uh, the other feature of this is you want to make sure that the waist strap, the waist buckle system, is resting over top of their lap and not over top of their bellies. So over top of the top of their thighs and in their hip region and not so much over their belly. Um, this is a little bit of a smaller child to be within this system, but this system is uh, designed and tested for uh, pediatric patients of all sizes. The second system we're showing you is the integrated car seat within the captain's seat in the rear of our medic units. These seats are designed for pediatric patients uh, with a weight range of 20 to 50 pounds. Uh, once again, this seat should only be utilized for those pediatric patients that are and not need of too much uh, invasive medical procedures. Um, if they are in need of those procedures, we should have them restrained uh, to our cot so they're much more easily accessible. Uh, some of the important features of this system is you want to make sure that the retaining clip, which is this clip right here, um, is in their across their nipple region. Uh, you don't want it up into their neck and you don't want it any lower than um, across their, uh, their nipple line. Uh, as you can see, the two buckle clips to the left and the right of the pediatric patient's waist um, that have the gray button on them, that is to loosen and tighten uh, the seat belt straps. Um, the red button releases the buckles and you want to make sure that this is just tight enough to where you're able to do what's called a pinch test on the straps and get just a little bit of material between your fingers. If you can't get it, it's too tight. If you have a bunch of material, it's too much. Um, other than that, uh, as, of, uh, as just like before, you want to make sure that the shoulder straps ride over top of the shoulders and not up against their neck or over top of their face. So this is the third method of restraining pediatric patients for transport to the hospital. This is utilizing an existing car seat from a caregiver or a parent. A uh, couple quick things on utilizing car seats is we want to make sure that we're not utilizing car seats that were involved in auto accidents. Car seats are only rated and tested to be involved with one crash. Um, once that occurs, those seats need to be disposed of and a new seat needs to be purchased. So we don't want to be leaving pediatric patients in the car seats that they were involved in a crash with and transport them in that same seat to the hospital. Uh, we also want to make sure in those situations that we're removing the children from those seats, uh, totally assessing them and evaluating them before they go into a car seat. Um, that way we're getting a true assessment of that patient before they're transported to the hospital. Um, if we're going to utilize a car seat for transport, we want to make sure that that is appropriately secured to the cot, and that's what I'll go over with you in this video. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is go over the restraint system within the car seat itself. Just like in the previous video with the integrated car seat within the medic unit, um, the setup is very much the same. You're going to have a five-point restraint system, a buckle in between their legs with a release button, a uh, retention strap, uh, across their nipple line. Once again, that needs to be around their nipple line and not above into their neck or below into their belly. There is a push button release for that. We want to make sure that the strap's right over top of their shoulders. There's a release strap and a tightening strap here in the front of the seat with a release button. This allows you to pull your straps tighter or push the button to release those straps. Once you get them in the seat, you want to do that pinch test once again to make sure you get a little bit of fabric in between your fingers. Um, if you can't, then it's too tight. If you have a bunch of fabric, it's too loose. Once we've done that, to secure the seat to the cot, we want to make sure that the cot is upright, 
the seat is placed within the crevice of the cot and we're going to utilize only the waist strap of the cot to secure the seat to the cot. In the back of the cot you'll see a small hole which says forward facing vehicle belt or latch system. That is where the seat belt is going to be pushed through. Take the seat belt, push it through there to the other side. Once you get to the other side, it needs to be buckled and both of those need to be pulled tight. It needs to be pulled tight um, until you can pull the seat side to side and there's no or very, very little movement. Once that's occurred, your seat is secured to the cot and you can transport your patient. So this will be the fourth method you have available to you for pediatric restraint. We have purchased the Ferno PDM8 restraint systems for both the medics. Um, these systems are rolled up and they're stored underneath of the CPR seat in the medics. Um, if you need to attach them to the cots for pediatric restraint, um, it's fairly easy to do so. However, it will take you a little bit of uh, getting used to on where the placement of all the attachment straps go. There are four attachment straps. Two of them will go to the back of the head of the medic. When you place these straps, you'll see a black one and a gray one. They get wrapped around the back of the cot, uh, strapped in, and pulled tight. Uh, just to the point to where the device is centered uh, on the cot and to where it's not going to move around. Uh, there's no specific placement for these, just as long as they're uh, along the back side. You can see how they actually go over top of the, um, the system that we have back here for storing supplies. And that's fine, just as long as it's uh, secure, tight, and in place. There are two lower strap systems that you'll see here, one on each side. Um, it's easiest if you undo or drop down the side rails and attach them to the side rails of the cot itself. Uh, they wrap around and buckle back on themselves, and once again, you pull those tight. Once you have those attached to the side rail system, you can put the handrails back up. Uh, once you do that, the system is in place and you can put your child, put the pediatric uh, patient within the system. Just like the car seat, just like the integrated system within the medic units, um, the system is set up uh, much the same way. You'll have the five point restraint system, buckle between the legs with the release button and the tightening strap side tightening straps, retaining clip at the chest, which should be nipple level, shoulder straps. The one extra strap that you'll see in this system is behind the chest restraining strap, and you'll see the, you'll see the black chest strap here. Um, this is just an extra chest strap that goes around the, the child and gets tightened down uh, to the point uh, where they still have expansion of their chest. This does not have to be extremely chest uh, tight. You do want some room within this. And then over top of it, you'll see once again the retaining clip. And this retaining clip, you just have to thread your strap system through, place at the nipple level, and then once again, you want to do your pinch test to make sure you don't the, the shoulder straps aren't too loose or too tight. And if they need to tighten them up or loosen them up, that with the waist straps. Uh, this system is rated for pediatric patients between 7 and 100 pounds, so it's got a wide range of weights that you can restrain with this system. Just like any of the other systems that we've shown you, um, the cot itself is also a rated system for these pediatric patients with the four-point harness. The policy that is included with this training um, tells you that you are to use one of these methods. Another one of these methods, there's five altogether, is actually using the cot for those pediatric patients that are in severe condition to where we are having to work all over that child. Uh, so we may only have one strap at the time. Uh, Ohio State law does allow us that leniency when it comes to transporting patients and how we are restrained and they are restrained because of the understanding of the type of care we may have to give the patient. 
We need to do our due diligence to make sure we're restraining these pediatric patients as much as possible. Also with this, we should not be transporting these patients on the laps of caregivers or patients and buckling them in with the same seatbelts. So if you have any further questions, please let me know, and I hope you have enjoyed and understand this training.